My name is Sarah and I make videos about movies. Today, we're gonna talk about House of Darkness. My favorite genre is horror. I love indie films. I feel like they often take chances that big budget films don't take or have a style that they are experimenting with. House of Darkness is about a man who takes a woman back to her house. She invites him in for a drink and over the course of the night, spooky things happen. Is it about vampires? Yes, it's about vampires. You guys have seen the like female seductress, villainous vampire story before. This is not exactly that. You already know what is about to go down because the entire like creepy atmospheric stuff that sober people can see happening in the background versus the character who is clearly drunk is not seeing. It's so awkward. It's a very interesting like take on this kind of story. She invites him inside into her creepy mansion, which he mentions, he mentions repeatedly how big and how rich the people that own that house must be in order to live there, which astute observation. But it also, as you learn, comes from a chip that he has on his shoulder because apparently when he gets drunk, he just starts talking about his insecurities, which is very different from other takes on the story. You have to suspend reality a lot because he appears to be drunk and she's not. Some of the things that you're catching on to are like, look behind you, man. You know, look over there. Did you see that? They're gonna get you, man. You know, and he is seeing things and feeling things, but it's always delayed. It's always late because drunk. But at the same time, I'm like, you have so many opportunities here, <laughs> but not really. And that's the whole thing. You have an illusion of choice, an illusion that perhaps you can escape, but not really, cause vampire. So in this story, which every time I see three female vampires, I get the feeling that they're trying to associate with Dracula's story because he had three vampire wives. So, <laughs> He gets in there, they're trying to make out or whatever, and they're interrupted by her sister who comes in and is also in a very creepy way, speaking very slowly and clearly, waiting for a genuine response. And it's awful and it's cringy because especially with an audience, and another female character there, and this female character is supposed to be her sister, it has now created a weird dynamic there. And they're encouraging him to express his feeling, to express himself for the purpose of what? I don't understand. None of it matters for their own purposes. That's what all of this is about. Every moment, is orchestrated for their pleasure, for their satisfaction. And this is what we're getting. On the other side of things, as the audience, this awkward conversation when you know that he's about to get it and seeing the ways that they kind of tease him and sort of make him think that this is a normal situation. A little awkward, a little like socially awkward, but nothing that's totally out of the norm. Nothing to be alarmed about until the very end. <laughs> then there's a lot to be alarmed about and then it's over. This one in particular was so cringy and awkward to me, which is interesting, but also I felt like Where's my gore? Where is like, where's my horror horror? Because it's, there's some horror, but it's mostly cringe and it's mostly just awkward, which may have been the point. Y'all let me know. So most of the movie is just talking. It's just dialogue. It's just conversation. You know, you get shots of the, this creepy manner, the exterior, hallways, fireplaces, 
what have you, but most of your attention is focused on these two characters and the verbal and nonverbal communication that they're having, how he is affected by changes in temperature, sounds, light, and she's not at all affected because she already knows what's up <laughs> because vampire. So her reactions seem like out of sync because vampire and his reactions to her are out of sync because vampire. And honestly, that's not what I came here for, but I see, let's see what you've done here, you know? Gotta have something different in this genre. With this dynamic, you wanna create something different, something, there's a lot of tension, there's a lot of awkward, uncomfortable tension and conversations in there, which is not what I came for, but was also a surprise. That was genuinely unexpected. So overall, I would say it is kind of scary, really awkward, great acting. Her sister telling that story, which was so heartbreaking and haunting, so well done and so well told. She's got a great, great voice quality to be the one to tell that story. Would I recommend it? Yes, because I'm the friend that likes to freak out my other friends with some of the movies I make them watch. And if y'all are watching this video right now, y'all know what I'm talking about. So yes, I would recommend it because um, it is spooky and it is scary. And then it has these unexpected moments in it, but it never falls into camp it never falls into being goofy or, you know, screwball comedy, not at all. I would give it three out of five stars. I was very surprised by a lot of the details. The dialogue, like I said, was really good and I would recommend it. So thank you all for spending your time here with me today. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next time.